Good morning and welcome to um, Calamity News and Politics uh, video cast. Unfortunately, as you can tell from the release date on this, this is not my normal weekly podcast. Um, it is, of course, because of what happened yesterday um, when insurrectionists attacked Congress and our democracy. So let's just let's just start out with what the word that pops into my head which is wow what the heck just happened um so a group of of trump supporters who believe his lies that the election was rigged um went to a rally the president came out um and whipped them into a frenzy and told them to go attack the capitol building to delay the the election and they did they went right down to the capitol building marched right in um all of these different um congresspersons um on both sides of the aisles were hiding under their desks they had to be removed to the emergency bunkers because these um seditionists eventually broke into the into the chambers into the house and senate chambers and we've all seen the pictures you know people's feet on the desk and the election was stolen despite a complete lack of any evidence whatsoever that of course terrified everybody you know democrat or republican do you really think that mob was going to not tear apart republicans let's face it that's what this is about it's not even about the democrats anymore trump is attacking his own party now and this was revenge not against the democrats but against mcconnell and pence and anyone who refuses to support his unsubstantiated theories now last week i had a commenter uh dump some comments on the on the bottom and i appreciate that i really do um i'm glad to see your opinion however um it was done prior to this happening so uh when you call on comment on this video <coughs> i didn't comment on your comments because i was waiting to see if you commented on this um this has nothing to do with what you were talking about um this isn't a legitimate look into the election or the fact that there might be fraud um it's pretty much already proven um you gave me some examples of things and of course i researched them and i couldn't find them on any legitimate news site i'm sorry but you I don't know where you get got your information from or what your source was, but I'm assuming that it was either QAnon or maybe one of the um, conspiracy theory uh, YouTube sites. And I'm sorry, but I I can't I can't trust your sources, okay? And and no offense to anybody, and I'm not bragging, okay? But I am bragging a little bit. I have an IQ of 156. That's not made up i'm a member of mensa um i have a nearly eidetic memory and i'm disabled um, i can barely walk across the room so i spend all day on the internet reading the news but i don't read the news that you read alone so my sources are not just fox and msnbc and cnn um, you know, I don't necessarily follow the big three. I'm a big fan of BBC uh, World News Tonight because they have no dog in the fight. They just report the news. Um, Al Jazeera. I read international, um, the IRJ. I can never get their thing. But they're a very conservative uh, outlet along with um, Breitbart. Um, and I read TASS um the russian news um so i have a pretty well-rounded look at all of this and there's just no merit to the case the case has no legs so what i'm most upset about isn't just the fact that you scared the hell out of the united states and the senate and the house of representatives 
you ended up getting somebody killed. You know, I hear calls this morning of blood on their hands for Hawley and Cruz and Trump. All three of those people should have tendered their resignation this morning. And the fact that they didn't tells you just, they don't care. And they got somebody killed. I don't even know her name yet. I, I just know that she was shot in the neck and she died. Um, apparently, she may have been shot through a door that she was trying to break down. We don't, we, we won't know for a couple of days. But I just want you to understand that this really wasn't even an attack on the Democrats. Everything that Trump did was to punish the GOP for not unanimously supporting his claims, for Pence for not trying to overturn an election that he's clearly lost. And I guess that's my thing to the to the people out there that are that believe that there might be a conspiracy. I'm sorry, okay. When it was nobody chiming in, I was like, go for it. You know, do all the recounts, all the investigations you can, and if you find something, well, good for you. However, we we're way beyond that point. Really, seriously, you're still following Trump when he's been abandoned by a Supreme Court where he personally appointed one third of the members. So they wouldn't grant him any of his cases because they were baloney. Okay, Mitch McConnell won't recognize his claims. All right, Bill Barr doesn't recognize this. There's nobody left when Mike Pence abandoned him. So he decided he would punish all the Republicans by burning, burning down the House. And that's where we are right now. So what are the consequences of this? Well, number one, do you think that this issue isn't going to come up in every single election from now on? It's called a precedent. The reason why most uh, presidents did two terms is George Washington sent the precedent. He didn't want to run for a third term. He thought that was too king-like. So all of these elections from now on, if you believe what Trump told you, they can't be trusted. And when I say that, that means that nobody should be in office right now. If Trump's assertions are true, Mitch McConnell isn't the leader of the Senate. Donald Trump isn't the president. You know, if it was fraud this time, it was fraud last time. They didn't miraculously change the way they did anything from four years ago. So now we've lost all trust in the government. And if you don't think that's a blow to democracy, I don't know what is. Um, it's the most horrible thing that could have possibly happened to us. The fact that there are still senators out there leading this idea that there was some sort of election fraud, um, I think it's backfired. I honestly believe there was no reason for them to challenge these people except for Trump's base. Okay, Ted Cruz and Holly, with the blood dripping from their hands from that woman's death, okay, don't vote for them. Okay, they are undermining our democracy. They're guilty of sedition. And afterwards, consequences? If Trump is in charge with reckless endangerment, inciting a riot, and negligent homicide, then that shows you that the rich don't face the same consequences that the rest of us do. Because that's exactly what he did. And in a court of law, he would be convicted. If they impeach him or they use the 25th uh, Amendment to get rid of him, I don't care. Even if I have to wait out the next 13 days, he is a threat to the democracy. Cruz, Hawley, and the rest of those morons are all responsible for this. So you remember their names and you remember that they wanted to start a dictatorship with Donald Trump as the dictator. Well, I'm frightened because I'm a veteran and I don't know what's going on and I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna tell you, 
you're not Americans. Go live in a totalitarian state. If you want Trump to be president for life, then I think we should talk to Kim Il Jung about that, or me, Kim Jong Un. Uh, I'm old. I remember. I remember his grandfather. That's how old I am. I was stationed in Korea, uh, like a couple of years after after the Kim Il Sung died. So things are not good there, and we don't want that to happen here. Well, I'll see you again a little bit later. Um, hopefully with some better news and a better America to come. I think we need to take this as a lesson and make sure that our democracy stands. This is a test. Stand up and pass this test, America. Thank you very much.